Hi, I'm Doug Van Pelt of Heaven's Metal Magazine. I want to talk about the death of a music magazine. I started publishing Heaven's Metal Magazine in 1985, which was a great year of music magazines launching. That year saw Alternative Press, Spin, Metal Edge, and Heaven's Metal all launch at the same time. Now, Heaven's Metal's coverage was a unique little bird. Uh, it was a subgenre of a genre. Heaven's Metal, the name kind of implies, covered the Christian heavy metal scene, which exploded in the mid 80s and actually kind of took over uh, around 2003. I'll get to that in a minute. But Heaven's Metal magazine went out of print in 2012. Now, I want to talk about the glory years of print rock magazines. The glory years for Heaven's Metal didn't really start until about 1995. So a lot of successes like a two-disc box set that a major record label released called the Heaven's Metal Collection. But in 95, we changed the name of the magazine from Heaven's Metal to HM because the word metal became a bad word. It was like a weight around our necks. And sure enough, when we changed the name to HM, uh, advertising sales got a little bit easier. But what happened is in the early 90s, grunge Seattle scene took over and record labels dismantled their metal divisions, radio dropped their metal format, and retail stores like Sound Warehouse, for example, took their metal sections and dissolved them or shrunk them to like a small little bin. The glory years for HM Magazine included a lot of things that were kind of heady for a rock journalist to experience, a lot of fun. I uh, woke up every day glad to do what I was doing. Um, Battle of the Band Contest. They invited me to be a judge. So there was a club called the New Union. It used to be owned by Prince called the Union in Minneapolis. They changed it to the New Union. I went up there several years in a row and helped judge the Battle of Band Contest. Uh, there was an online Battle of Bands contest called Famecast after the 2000s that had me come and judge their finals for at the Stubbs Barbecue in 2008, I think it was. Um, I went on a blogger's trip to Uganda because my blog had so many hits. I uh, got a gold record plaque from P.O.D., who were signed to Atlantic Records, as a way of saying thanks for helping us become successful. Uh, there was festival stages that had an uh, HM magazine stage at Cornerstone Festival, the Purple Door Festival, Sunshine Festival, and Creation Festival. Tens of thousands of people attended those things. It was great. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine called me up to get a quote when Christian Metal became newsworthy because... The lead singer for As I Lay Dying, Tim Lambie, says hired a hitman to murder his wife. And Rolling Stone needed a quote, so they called the Christian Heavy Metal Magazine, or Christian Hard Music Editor, to get a quote. Uh, I was asked to be on the board of advisors for the Visible School of Music in Memphis, Tennessee. Still on that board today. Uh, the Dove Awards changed the name of their category in around 2000 from Hard Rock Metal to Hard Music, which was the subtitle of HM Magazine. I remember the guy from the Dove Awards saying, well, congratulations, there's now a category of Dove Awards named after your magazine, click. Um, I was a tour sponsor for several tours. Uh, one of the bigger ones was called Scream the Prayer, which was around the time that Christian metal blew up and kind of took over, like Warp Tour. Majority of the bands on Warp Tour were Christian. Uh, the Devil Wars Prada, August Burns Red, Under Oath, Paramore, Living Sacrifice, uh, Squad 5 -0. Uh Christian music was just super, super popular and during that time. Uh, most record labels, they were releasing something into this Christian market from Atlantic Records to Tooth and Nail to Face Down. You'd look at their one sheets and they always had on their marketing plans, full page, two page spread ads in HM Magazine. So those were some heady things, but... Uh, in 2010, we came to our 25th anniversary. This is a 25th anniversary issue. It was real easy to sell $30,000 plus in ads for this issue. Uh, a couple years later, January of 2011, uh, this particular issue, the Chariot, which is now known as 68, uh, sold $7,500 in ads. And my print bills were about eight grand. The circulation of the magazine went up to like 23,000 worldwide, which wasn't great, but it was very sustainable and successful for a magazine of our size. So with this panel, I would like to discuss why print died. I would like to discuss how some survived monetizing rock journalism in a post-Napster iTunes age. And I want to answer the question, what did an influencer look like in 1989, and what does an influencer look like in 2024? So, 
you have any questions, comments, join the discussion. Thank you.